Dr. Joseph Maroon is a neurosurgeon. I'm wondering, while you're out swimming 2.6 miles, you're biking, you're, you're, you're running, what are you thinking about? Are you in the present now? What, what is going on in your mind at that time? You mentioned stress relief. This is, yeah, this is yeah. important. Uh, I, I, the, it, it's kind of the Buddhist philosophy of mindfulness. Yes. You become incredibly mindful of your body. Yes. You know, how do you feel? Your breathing, your heart rate, your legs, the muscles. There's an incredible somatic experience. Mm -hmm. So you're really focused entirely on the present. Yes. What fuel am I going to take? Yes. How much water do I need? Yes. You're focusing on the next step, the next mile. Yes. Um, and really not looking to the finish. It's completing that next step, the next mile, the next, etc. And you know, William Osler, a physician at Hopkins many years ago, he said, our goal is not to see what lies dimly in the future, but to do what lies clearly at hand. And when you're in this kind of an event, you're doing what you have to do at every minute, every second. So, and then it's a spiritual experience. Uh, there are certain psalms, there are certain biblical passages that go through my head that I repeat kind of like a mantra. Yes. So that it really alleviates, suppresses, reduces the pain that comes from the physical activities when you put your mind in another area, in another space. Uh, the 23rd Psalm. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I, I've said that 50,000 times, I'm sure, in, in these situations. Yes. So that's what goes through my mind. Wow. Isabella, you, the fact that you climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, um, is there a fitness routine that you include? Uh, I mean, I know you're a busy student, I believe, and uh, y what do you do for your fitness? I run about three to four times a week, but not nice. too heavily, but mm -hmm. every dinner I always walk or do some sort of physical activity before bed just to kind of get myself ready and collected and read, and I just kind of take it easy, but it's just persistency and always working out and not forgetting is kind of the key for myself. Uh, Bella and I are going to do another event this coming May. Mm -hmm. uh, Rocky Blyer, the legend pullback for the Pittsburgh Steelers and I are co-chairing an event for the uh, veterans. Uh, it's a program uh, that is in the Pittsburgh area to support veterans' health, mental health, PTSD, and things yes. of this nature. And, uh, there's a hike, it's a 70-mile hike through the Laurel Mountains over the course of three days that uh, we're going to be doing in May, and I'm, I'm telling Bella... <laughs> Start this, trading. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not going to be an easy event, so... She's got youth on her side, however... <laughs> <laughs> she, I want her to carry my backpack. <laughs> oh, Dr. Joseph Maroon, you know, as a, a, a neurosurgeon, you know, you, you, on a very serious note, um, I'm concerned about the number of head injuries and the potential problem associated with uh, disrupting hormones and some of the things that you've learned about the function of the brain and how the brain may be able to adapt under good conditions. But share with me a little bit about how um, our young athletes uh, are uh, dealing with this and what, what your cautions might be and what can we do about this problem. I've been involved with uh, concussions, concussion management, sports medicine for 25, 30 years now. Uh, and quite a few years ago, close to 20 years ago, Mark Lovell, a neuropsychologist, and I developed a neurocognitive test called IMPACT. IMPACT is a 20-minute PC-based, now iPad-based uh, test that athletes take prior to participating in sports contact sports. And if an injury, if, if an athlete has a bump to the head or a concussion, they are now retested against their baseline. This impact test has now been administered to over 8 million kids in the United States mm -hmm. as baseline. Mm -hmm. And 
getting to your question, the most important thing, there are several most important things in sports. Number one, there's an acute awareness of the, of the long-term effects now, potential long-term effects of concussion. Number two, we have to mitigate as much as possible through equipment, rules changes, information and education to coaches, parents, and kids about the effects of concussion. And number three, we have to manage concussions appropriately, upfront, immediately. The problem in the past is when an, an athlete would have a concussion, if they go back into the arena prior to the brain healing itself, then the microglia in the brain, which are kind of like the white cells, if you get a splinter under your fingernail, you get red hot, tender, and swollen. Mm -hmm. In the brain, your brain gets red hot, tender, and swollen too when you get impacted by a blow. If the brain gets hit again before it goes into the reparative mode, then it's like a brush fire in a forest in terms of progressive neuroinflammation yes. and long-term neurodegeneration. The athletes who have had chronic traumatic encephalopathy, Mike Webster, Junior CL, many athletes now have been diagnosed post-mortem yes. with this problem. And I think it's been an incredible alarm bell that has now resonated. You can't pick up a, a, a paper today or on TV without hearing about the concussion, of concussions and how we have to get hold of this problem. The NFL, it's a major problem. All sports, youth sports. So what, what we've done for youth sports up until this year, neurocognitive tests were not available for the most important age group, six to 12. There are over three million kids, three to three and a half million kids playing football, soccer, with no baseline studies of their brain function. We now, through IMPACT, have a baseline test that can be administered to these kids so that if they do get hit in the head, it's not a question of how many fingers do you see and look to the right and look to the left we can set them down with a game-style neurocognitive test to measure their brain function and compare it against the baseline. So it's the management. When we manage these appropriately, I think it greatly mitigates the long-term and the short-term effects of concussion. So a long-winded answer to your question, but no, I, it's a very important one. I appreciate that because when I was 17 years old and I was a fullback in high school and I was on a championship team, um, I had a head collision straight on, helmet to helmet, and I was laid out on the ground and I looked up and I didn't know where I was. And the coach came up and did exactly that. How many fingers do you see? And I could, I could tell him how many fingers and he did the, the eye test. And then he looked at me and he said, um, uh, you know, who are you and you know, what did you do yesterday? And I looked at him and I said, well, I, I think I know who I am, but I, I don't know what I did yesterday. And I just stared at him. And he said, uh, okay, well pack up and go home. And I went home and I was so disoriented, I, I was like, you know, not knowing what to do. Um, I, I, I felt guilty because I was a young man and, you know, wanted to be part of the championship team. And I thought I let my team down, you know, I, I was gone, you know. Uh, and I didn't know if I should come back the next day or not. No one guided me about it. Uh, and of course, I, I recovered, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I came back to play, you know, the next day. Next day. But. I, you know, obviously, I put myself at risk not knowing. Correct. And well, Nick, I, I think you're bringing, what you describe is what happens to between one and a half to three million kids a year in this country. Yeah. The same thing. You had retrograde amnesia. You had confusion, disorientation. Yes. The hallmarks of concussion. One out of ten kids have concussions, lose consciousness. Nine out of ten never lose consciousness. It used to be think, used to be thought if you, you get knocked out, you don't have a concussion until you lose consciousness. Not so. Ninety percent don't lose consciousness, but they can have lingering effects. And to go back in as you did mm -hmm. really subjected you to really significant problems. Fortunately, uh, like you, like most, get better. But uh, 
it's, it's just critical that the management be improved. At the University of Pittsburgh, we're now seeing close to 10,000 new kids a year with concussions. Mm -hmm. 10,000. We have seven neuropsychologists who do nothing but evaluate kids with concussions mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Yeah. So it, it is a problem, but having said that, youth sports has never been safer because we now are using this information to educate coaches, to educate parents, to now perform baseline testing at this age group, and to manage concussions appropriately. The lessons learned from sports are huge. General MacArthur said and has inscribed on a, on a monument facing the playing fields at West Point, on the fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds that on other days and on other fields will lead to victory. What does he mean by the seeds? Leadership, teamwork, loyalty, commitment, playing in the face of adversity. These are things, you're here and I'm here because we both were very active in sports and we learned these lessons yes. very well. Yes. That takes us through our entire lives in other areas so that it's so important that these sports continue, but in the safest way possible.